So, as is the case after almost all of these shootings, in the case of the Dayton uh, shooting the other day, people came forward to describe years and years of frightening behavior by the apparent shooter, Connor Betts. Clearly, mental illness is a major component in a lot of these violent rampages. The FBI says that 70 percent of mass shooters show signs of mental illness. It's almost never discussed on television for some reason, and that's a shame. James Fitzgerald is a retired FBI criminal profiler. He's the author of the book series, Journey to the Center of the Mind. He joins us tonight. Thanks very much, um, Mr. Fitzgerald, for coming on tonight. So mental illness uh, almost seems like, by definition, plays um, a, a role in the shootings, a central role. Is it a specific kind of mental illness? Uh, I'm going to answer that, Tucker, but real quick, uh, hats off and kudos to the officers who responded to the scene. I watched some of your show last week with the officers in New York getting water sprayed on them and their self-control, yeah. while the officers in El Paso and Dayton certainly used their self-control to m minimize the situations in both of those places. So hats off again to them. Amen. Um, yes. There have been studies over the uh, over recent years, certainly by the FBI, my former unit and some of the folks I used to work with there who did a, did a very excellent study about uh, these exact type of shootings, active shooters, mass shooters, what have you, and at least 64 uh, of those different incidents uh, back to 2000. And in about 65 percent of those cases, there was some component of a mental health issue, uh, whether it's been previously diagnosed or not. Uh, that, that's another story. But. Uh, these weren't necessarily the people that were suffering from psychosis or deep schizophrenia, uh, where they were, you know, bundled up in a corner in, in fetal position. These are people who could function every day. They had some depressive uh, depression issues, anxiety, certainly paranoia. But, but they basically functioned in society. They looked and, and, and walked and talked like you or I, but just at some point... Uh, Something clicked within them. Uh, a, a bunch of factors came together in their heads, outside external stimuli, and they decided to act as they uh, as they did. And as we've seen in the last week, three separate shooting incidents. So, is there some comprehensive effort to figure out exactly what went wrong mentally, wh wh what the signs are of someone who is exhibiting behavior that could ultimately become dangerous, as distinct from someone who's just eccentric or sad? I mean, is there any attempt to to, to really systematically figure this out? Well, sure, and a lot of people are eccentric. A lot of people are sad in this country, and for that matter, right. around the world. Remember, it's not limited to just the U.S. The biggest mass shooting of all was in Sweden in 2011. So, and, and we had Christchurch and, of course, uh, Sri Lanka uh, uh, earlier uh, this year, unfortunately. So these things happen worldwide. And not everyone who has some sort of a, of a, of a mental illness or a, uh, an issue in that regard is going to react violently as these people do. It has to be a combination of all the planets aligning and their moons aligning. Uh, I'm talking from a mental health perspective with external stimuli, with access to weaponry, with uh, other other small peer groups that only are, are, are basically um, uh, bubbles of the same kind of people who think the same way they do. And then, again, throw in this mental health issue with perhaps lack of uh, uh, parental background, perhaps lack of other uh, intimate relationships with people. And, and, Tucker, something I haven't heard anyone else talk about in these three shootings is the uh, phenomenon of, uh, of incel, involuntary celibacy. And yeah. I can't rule out that these people... If they don't want to admit it or write about it in their alleged manifestos, perhaps they're also suffering from this. And that is that young men who don't seem they're, they don't feel qualified to date or be in intimate relationships with the women they'd like, so they take it out on uh, other people. Yes. They may camouflage it and say, oh, it's about Hispanics invading our country or, right. or people at a garlic festival or a guy actually shooting his sister and her boyfriend. What's that all about? Uh, who was involved in exactly. crazy misogynistic type music, uh, a porno grind. I never heard that term before researching your show. So there's all kinds of complex factors here that can't be ruled out yet. It's way too early in these three shootings, but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, something like incel played a role in it. It did with Ted Krasinski, the Unabomber, we found out years later, although that term wasn't even around back then. Yeah, and it's not enough to just dismiss it as toxic masculinity and tell men to shut up. There's a huge problem with young American men. And nobody wants to deal with it, um, and, and clearly we, we need to. James, thank you very much. Good to see you. You're welcome.